Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to add on authorization roles in your ASP.NET MVC 6 application. Um, in a previous video I already created and installed identity, um, set up an email verification system for the user, um, so I have an account with login. But currently the login doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. As you can see I'm not logged in at the moment, but I'm able to take a look at my authors and I'm able to edit them as just a regular person in the world that's not a good way to run a database clearly so I need to set this up so that only authorized users can see authors and then only certain users can create or edit so I've got my project here it's up and running and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get simple basic authorization to work So as I said, I already have authorization set up and configured. So I want to set it so that the only people that can see the index for authors are the people that are logged in. So I'm going to go to the top of my authors controller. I'm going to add a new using. Authorization is what you're allowed to do in a, in a networked environment. Authentication is proving who you say you are. So we've already done authentication. This is authorization. So when I go down through here, the add-on I need is on top of which every one of these objects I want people to only access when they're logged in is simply the annotation authorize. Now when I put that in here and run the project, index would not be accessible until I'm logged in. It'll force me to log in upon me clicking on the link. So I click on it, but I have to log in. Now I can log in. I can still edit, I can still create, but I can at least force people not to go in until they're in. If I want to hide it completely from them, I can go to my layout page. And here's my link for it. I can add a link around it. So by adding this if user.identity is authenticated above that particular link, now when I run this and I go to log in, I can't log or I can't when I go to click on authors, I can't click on authors until I'm logged in. Which is um better because if a user sees a link, they're gonna want to be able to click on it. Plus this gives me a little more funness of logging in. I actually can see the page changing. Now authors is there, and I don't have to worry about logging in because I've already done so. Okay, so that's simple authentication. Uh, let's now deal with roles. Roles are a little more complicated, but they give you more flexibility. With roles, you allow it to have scaling effects of your users. You can have an administrator that can do everything, an editor that can do certain things, a regular user can just simply look at data. Um, to do this, you're going to take a look at the SSMS or your SQL Server, however you get there, and take a look at a couple of tables. The first one is ASP.NET roles. I'm going to edit the top here. There's a simple way to pull this off. And all you have to do is basically give it an ID, give it a name, a normalized name, and concurrencies blank for now. I'm not going to deal with that. Okay, another one. Editors. Okay. 
So I've got two usernames. I now need to assign these users to a role. So when I take a look at my two users, I'm going to make Control Lee a PT College Administrator. My Gmail account will be an editor. So I'm going to copy that ID. I'm going to go to ASP.NET User Roles and edit the top 200 roles. Put the user ID in there and the role. So he's an administrator. And then same thing for my Gmail accounts. My Gmail account will be an editor. All right, so I've created the account. So the database backend is set up. Um, I now need to set up this in the ASP. So let's go to our controller again. This authorize does a really good job of keeping people out. But I need to put it on all of them, right? So only authorized people can look at the details. Um, let's say that only administrators can create. So I'm going to add on the, the parameter here. And add it down here as well, even though they shouldn't be able to see this. Now, the roles I chose, the role names I chose are pretty common. Administrators, editors, you could come up with Cucumber, whatever you want. So I'm going to add um, administrators and editors here. And this should allow either access. Um, same thing down here. You want to make sure you set this authorization on every one of these methods. Because if you miss one, the hacker will find it, I assure you. Deletes administrator only. Deletes administrator only. All right, so let's run it. Log in. I'll log in with the Gmail accounts. Maybe. Oh, I forgot 42. Log in. Authors. So you see, I can't do certain aspects. I log in as my administrator accounts. I should be able to do everything. That's interesting. Why did that fail? I know why, because I forgot to add the service. So let me stop the project. And I need to go to Program CS. I need to add that here after my add default identity. So these are lambdas, so I need to add this to the chain. So I've now added identity roles into there. And let's see if I've got it working this time. The nice thing was it still worked, it just didn't work completely. So log in.
Look at that. If I log in as a regular user, I'm not allowed. Now, another really good rule of thumb here, we already showed you how to hide the, the link to index. You should probably also hide things in this page. So again, if a user can see it, they'll try to use it. So I can use the role here. So saying the administrators can create new. And I'll take the same thought process and put it to delete. So I'll run this now and I'll log in as a regular user. I shouldn't even sue. There's an error there. Let's fix that error. What just happens? Okay. That was really weird error. But you get the idea at that point. I could have thrown the add if in there. And if I need more than one person, use the or. So I'll log in as a regular person. I can't even see the crate. All right, so in this video, we demonstrated how to use um, authorization to get authentication based on roles or based on simple login. Thanks for watching. Good luck.